What's up, Foot Clan? We're tossing a coin into the wishing well, talking about our uh, favorite possible destinations for some of these NFL free agents. Stay tuned. Foot Clan, this is your last chance for the UDK pre-sale bonus. That means the lowest possible price on the UDK. And you guys know the ultimate draft kit, premium position rankings. We've got auction and dynasty values. We've got the 100-plus player profile videos, sleepers, breakouts, plus values, Scoring projections, tier-based drafting, Matt Harmon's reception perception. It's the so list good. goes on. And if you get it right now, before March 1st, lowest possible price, a $5 gift card to shopballers.com, a $10 gift card to fantasychamps.com, and you get early access to the Dynasty rankings and the rookie rankings. And then the real, the real special uh, treat here is a chance to win the ultimate prize pack, including a listener league spot. Check it out. Oh, that's so good. At ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Jason Moore is here. I am not just here. I am excited to be here. I'm looking forward to this show. Hamstrings intact. So far, so good. We'll see if we can Charlie Horse on air. Mike Wright is here. I'm just here. Regular here. I want the people to know that. I'm Andy Holloway. Thanks for tuning in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. I want to thank everybody for subscribing, reviewing the show, listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, ad-free on Stitcher Premium. We're everywhere. Mm-hmm. YouTube.com like, slash... I got Visa. The Fantasy Footballer. Still no highlight video. I don't know why I was promised a highlight video, mm. and it hasn't showed Who, up yet. Who's making that? Uh, that would be a one... Brian Ketron. Oh, man. What a loser. So, not surprised. He's about to get Voldemorted, where we just won't even say his name ever again. That was the first time I've ever said his name. Normally, it's just <laughs> the loser. loser. The loser. What else do we have today? We have a interesting, an interesting quick question. We have some mailback on the show and quite a bit of news to talk about. At least some conjecture, some optimism, maybe. Some, Certainly, some opportunity for uh, your your dynasty team to not be out of luck if you have Cam Newton or something of that nature. So we'll get into all of that. Our quick question today: We're going to jump into the oh, wishing well. Let me get my quarter out. Ping. The wishing well. Splash. What do you most want to see happen in free agency? So this isn't necessarily odds on favorite to happen but what would you most like to see take place i'll go first you uh, are Jason, excited to be Jason here i am will excited go first. to be here i'm going to uh, place my wishes upon the <laughs> chicago bears <laughs> such a strange one this is a strange one but you'll understand here real quick okay. my wish uh, it's a two-parter the first part is andy dalton signs as the backup for the Chicago Bears. They're not going out and they're signing some big name quarterback. They they said Trubisky is our guy for week, week one. one. <laughs> so I think that Andy Dalton falls in that category of uh, a, a, a guy who's only going to get a backup job and that maybe they would be willing to go out and sign him as a serviceable backup. And, pull, a, pull a Tannehill. And yeah. That's exactly my hope is that he can come in and be Tannehill. Or, or if Brady signs with the Titans, Tannehill can come and be the mm. Tannehill <laughs> for the Bears. Man, and, that would be so rough. And for Ryan Tannehill to do what he has, what he did last year, like if Ryan Tannehill was signed by the Bears, he's he the would starter. be the day one starter. Yes, even if he came in as the backup, because they would have a camp battle and he would win. Yeah, I yeah. just can't imagine. I took my team to the playoffs. We were on the verge of the Super Bowl backup job again well i mean if you get replaced by literally the greatest quarterback of all time at least at least right. you have that sure like they're not gonna go out and and you know sign 
Andy Dalton. Right. Um, so anyways, but then the other uh, more relevant piece that's not just anti-Trubisky, it's actually pro-Trubisky, is I would like for the Bears to get a tight end, an Austin Hooper or a Hunter Henry. Uh, they, you know, remember, Matt Nagy came over and their big signing was Trey Burton because right. the move tight end is so important to their system. They had Travis Kelsey when he was with Kansas City. They, they need a, a cert, like a really talented tight end. And not only... Did they lose Trey Burton this past year? But they've lost pretty much every tight end they've ever had. Some to horrific injuries, uh, some to to small ones. But I mean, Cord Cordero Patterson last year was saying, "Put me in at tight end, right. Because you don't have any." And I think that that was a that was an issue. So I want to see the best Bears we could see, the best Trubisky we could see, the best Matt Nagy we could see, and find out what is that really. So I want to gift them a tight end. And a better quarterback. Looking more likely Austin Hooper leaves Atlanta based on recent comments from the Atlanta Brass and the fact that they let him test free agency. He could make a decent amount of cash on the open market if a team like maybe the Bears have a big need at tight end. So yeah, Atlanta does not have a lot of money. And the fact that they're not going to franchise him and, and let him test it, it means he'll probably walk. I'm going to go with Derek Henry. To the Texans. Oh, yes. And this really, I, I've been saying this for months here at the studio to Jason, how impactful. No, it's very rare that a signing like Derrick Henry to the Texans could have the kind of impact that it that it would. He He's 26 years old. The Texans have a huge amount of cap space. Carlos Hyde and Lamar Miller are both free agents. They, they have depending on what numbers you look at between 56 million and 64 million in cap space. So they can actually make, they're one of the few teams that can compete for Derrick Henry, them and the Buccaneers probably outside of the Titans, just re-signing him. And you would be stealing the centerpiece of the offense of a division mate, which is why this will not happen Ooh, a twofer. because the Titans will in inevitably at least franchise Derrick Henry. I believe can they franchise? but then that's implying that they've signed Tannehill. Correct. So okay. I don't think Henry actually does escape, but this is the wishing well. Right. And I believe that you just want to see it that would be burn. such and they're win now mode, right? The Texans are win now. You've got Tunzel in tow. You've got money uh, coming off the books that frees up uh, an opportunity and you would be stealing. Uh, what what in the world do the Titans do on offense without Derrick Henry? Oh, they re they have to revamp what they're doing. Tannehill, he, he would, is, Tannehill would say, I got this. So he might. Yeah, he would say it. Yeah, but he. He'd be but, like, but the rest is up to him. Yeah, we'll see. So I would love to see Derrick Henry with Hopkins, Watson, the Texans' offense. He's what they need. Yeah, I like it. it would be very exciting. I want Jameis Winston. Oh, I really like this one, Mike. To go back to Tampa Bay. The dude was supporting two top ten fantasy wide receivers. He was fantastic. For fantasy football purposes, I don't care about the 30 interceptions because I'm not a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. I was going to say, you don't even care about the Buccaneers. <laughs> no, I don't. I, I don't care, care if they, they win. win or they lose. I like, love Michael I Keaton. care about Mike Evans and Chris Godwin doing work and, and Jameis being an extremely serviceable quarterback for fantasy purposes. This is what I want. Like This is my true desire. 100%. Just, Jameis back to Tampa Bay. There's been rumors of him getting like, like a two-year deal. I think that is a perfect situation for Tampa Bay where give him a give him at least another year under Bruce Arians. See if Bruce can fix the interception problems. Carson Palmer, his first year in Arizona with Bruce Arians, he had some serious interception problems as well. So let's see what he can do with Jameis and let's keep Chris Godwin and Mike Evans at the status quo of being dominant fantasy wide receivers. And at least like Four of the, his interceptions were at the fault of the receivers. So maybe he should have only had like twenty six. Now, have you have you considered the health of Bruce Arians in this equation? <laughs> Bruce Arians That's is sixty seven years old, and when he sits down with his doctor for his yearly checkup, his doctor talks about putting himself in stressful situations. He says, "Who's your quarterback, Bruce? 
Who, who's your quarterback yeah. for the next two look, years? Bruce <laughs> Arians, if you look My at... My prescription is to not re-sign <laughs> James yes. Winston. Exactly. Bruce Arians, right now, his normal walking around temperature is 102 and a half <laughs> degrees. That's just what he runs now. His doctor wrote up a prescription for Alex Smith, and he's on. He's looking for yeah. a pharmacy that can fill it. Exactly. Doc, I'm trying to get rid of this tomato face. <laughs> Bruce Ar- <laughs> Look, we have more love for Bruce Arians on this show than yes. anybody could because he, we're Cardinal fans and we yeah. loved him out here. I miss him out here. Mm-hmm. Um, miss, miss that but let's, face. Dude, that, that guy, it, he's, he's no always running 102 degrees. No one's There's no face, doubt. No one's face turns a darker shade of red on the sideline than Bruce Arians. It's, it's unbelievable. It starts red. He just got off the lake. Every time the game starts, he just got off eight hours on an open lake. Yeah, if it goes poorly, it starts to go purple. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's rough. So, Jameis, you're right, Mike. Yeah. For fantasy owners, for Godwin and Evans owners. Yes. Uh, that's what you want. I, you I, definitely my, want that consistency. My dynasty team, I've got Godwin. I was looking at trades. And I'm like, you freaking out? I'm like, please, Jameis, come back. No doubt. <laughs> Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right. I won't talk too much about the collective bargaining agreement, but... As of this recording, which is late Wednesday, the NFL PA's Board of Player Representatives has voted to send the ownership's proposed CBA to the entire membership for a vote. So there is the possibility that by the time you are listening to this or shortly after, there will be a vote completed and we'll either have 10 more years of labor peace or we'll be tabling the entire labor agreement until next off season. So and all the players who make exorbitant amounts of money and have massive contracts are all vocally against uh, the CBA. You might be looking on social media, seeing, you know, Russell Wilson or JJ water. Some of these guys uh, being anti, like I would vote no, but uh, they only need a simple majority. And the simple majority is not out of the whole. It's just out of those who vote. So if, you know, half the league is making the, the you know, minimum salary, they're going to get a huge bump from this. So hopefully it goes through. I am very optimistic. All right. We have this very interesting report. NFL Network, Ian Rappaport. The Panthers are moving forward with Cam Newton as the team's starting quarterback. There, there are some out there that believe that they will still make a move in the draft to potentially secure somebody. To. But. If you draft somebody pretty high, that puts Cam Newton in a different position than if they take somebody in the later rounds and they put the vote of confidence behind Cam. It's been a crazy offseason. I never I, – I was always of the opinion that Cam Newton would be a Panther and it made no sense for them to move on to somebody else because this is the NFL and there are a few good quarterbacks in the NFL. But then the most recent report – got me leaning towards, okay, maybe this is this is full rebuild. The thing is, is that there's really no rebuilds in the NFL. There's rebuilds from our perception. There's rebuilds from the team organizational perspective. But from a head coaching perspective, I think there are none. I mean, even Brian Flores in Miami, where it's tank for Tua, they have what, the sixth pick in the draft? You you compete each and every week. And, and Ja Rule... Oh, is not, murder! He doesn't want to come in and... Uh, and you know, tank a season away just to get the first pick. So Cam Newton's their best option and chance at winning, in my opinion. And then you look at what they did last year. Yes, they stunk. But our editor-in-chief pointed out there were six games that they lost by six or fewer points. So I don't know. Cam Newton's the best player that they could have at quarterback. Yeah, he's definitely the best player they can have at quarterback. It's just a matter of if they want to be mediocre because I think he will help them win a couple of games that they wouldn't win without him. And I, you know, losing Keekly, losing Greg Olson, not being that great of a roster front to back, anyways, with a new head coach, you don't see them coming in and being hyper competitive and a playoff contender or better uh, year one. But Ja Rule's trying to build something. And I agree with you that um, I agree with you that uh, if I'm going to he build wants something number one good, hits, man, you you want Cam Newton there. So I was I was surprised. I thought they were going to cut him early, let him go through free agency the way that they let Greg Olson go early um, and after Luke Keekley left. But this is uh, – I think this is good news for most all fantasy assets. It's all about his health, though. It, how healthy is he? Because a, a Cam Newton, to me, a Cam Newton that cannot run is not a franchise quarterback. 
Like I don't want Cam Newton as a pocket passer to be the future of my team. He only has – this year is the final year of his contract. So you will be making a decision that do you want to give Cam Newton the going rate for a starting quarterback and say you're locked in for five years, that you're our guy. Is he 29? He 29 is, or 30? Uh, Spotrack has him at 30, so I okay. don't know if he's actually turned 30 yet. So, yeah, you're right, Mike. I mean, this is a quarterback that has taken you to a Super Bowl before. He is unique in the way that he is. he's done that and had success over the past you know handful of years. He will be 31 on May 11th. Okay. He's still still young. But for yeah, a quarterback like that, it could he change He is still young, but he has been hit a ton, and if it, he needs his feet to work. I don't believe that Cam Newton will ever stop strategically running. It I will agree. be whether his body stops him from doing it. Yes. Yes. Peach Cobbler, we're talking about Pete Carroll, he says he expects Rashad Penny to begin training camp on the pup list. Mm -hmm. And he also talked a little bit about Chris Carson, who – uh, he he believes that Carson will be making a full recovery sooner than later. He Carson still can't do anything from his injury, but it wasn't it, it, the injury is not as bad as it as it could have been. So great news for Chris Carson. I still expect Seattle to make a move at the running back position, though. Yeah, one hundred percent. You can't rely on two injured guys who are barely going to be ready. Right, uh, and and that's and that's it. We're good. <laughs> oh yeah. Chiefs ready to make a cold-blooded move and not bring Sammy Watkins back for his $14 million salary in 2020. This according to general manager Brett Veach. Good source. He said yeah. he's unlikely to come back <laughs> with that deal. The Chiefs will meet with Watkins' agents this week at the local zoo. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Uh, you were trying to think, like, where are the reptiles? Yeah, I was trying to think about where. Are, I mean, what? It's not. Isn't you know. there usually, like, it's it's not, it doesn't sound as good, but, like, at a zoo, they have, like, a reptile house. Yeah. yeah but if you're, like, at the local <laughs> reptile house, that doesn't sound right. Right. And then it's not like, you know, there's a an aquarium for the fish, but there's nothing for the reptiles. There's rocks. They like rocks a lot. Going back to the point here, Sammy Watkins, are you surprised they don't want to pay him $14 million? for? Nope. Uh, no, I'm not surprised at all. His, his cap hit is absolutely ridiculous. You have to restructure. So it comes down to how much does Sammy Watkins want to play in Kansas City and have the potential to go be a repeat Super Bowl champion? If you're a McCall, Hard if you're a McCall Hardman. Oh, gosh. Owner, you read this news. Sammy Watkins has been all over the place in how he talks about his future. Are you going to buy McCall Hardman right now? Sure. I, I think even if Sammy Watkins is back, I think McCall Hardman is undervalued in general. I, I, I still think he's uh, got a very high ceiling, so I would buy McCall Hardman. And then it, should Sammy Watkins uh, be cut, uh, you know, great, all the, all the more opportunity. And then uh, Doug Marone talking about the 2020 starting quarterback for Jacksonville. He said it's not really going to happen until we start playing in the preseason. That's not good. I think it's much worse for Nick Foles than I expected. Yeah, this, the, the old adage of if you have two quarterbacks, you have no you quarterback. Have no quarterback. <laughs> Doug That's Marone has apparently never heard that. Yeah. Before we move on to the mailbag, I want to thank today's sponsor. It's a new one. Ladies and gentlemen, you've heard of them. Theragun. It is the handheld percussive therapy device that releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combination of depth speed and power you may not even notice how much soreness and muscle tension you're used to living with until you start using the theragun all three of us mm. have received a theragun and it so is awesome. sensational i've been trying to hit the gym trying to work on my fitness you know what sucks leg day it is absolutely the worst because your legs feel like they're gonna explode and i am not joking at all when I say the Theragun has helped me. It helps relieve the pain in my legs. Well, you see it on the sidelines of all yes. the professional sports right now. Like our pickleball courts when we're out there. <laughs> our, I, bring, I bring mine. That's true. That's true. You've been Theragunning. Oh, good. Again, and pickleball. I'm Theragunning my shins in mm -hmm. between the matches. It is really helping out. And you, and you can also, with Theragun, you can check out the story of Dr. Jason Wersland. He's, he's the doctor who created the Theragun. He was in a, at a horrific motorcycle accident, and he couldn't find a way to, to help his pain. So he, he fixed the problem by doing it himself. Feel better naturally. Treat your pain 
and get back to your life. Try Theragun risk-free for 30 days or your money back by going to theragun.com slash footballers. For a limited time, our listeners to this podcast can get a free charging stand with purchase. It's a $79 value. That's theragun.com slash footballers, theragun.com slash footballers. And Foot Clan, if you want to be like Brooks, if you want to get into the listener league, we just want to remind you one last time, this is the last show that you're going to hear until that deal <laughs> we're very is... Like, <laughs> yes, we, we do make Brooks buy the UDK. We, well, of course. If you want to be like... Well, Brooks, Brooks no do free you passes. use the UDK? No free passes. Brooks, do you use the UDK in your drafts? Oh, yeah. You're darn right, because you're a smart man. But <laughs> that's get the, why I pre-ordered Get mine. the Ultimate Draft <laughs> Kit now, Thanks, before March 1st, so that you can get in that sweep sweepstakes. Ooh, Sweet sticks? for that listener league spot, and you will also, of course, get the best draft kit for fantasy football yes. at the lowest price. UltimateDraftKit.com. Mailbag. Mailbag. Yeah. All right, we're here to answer your questions, help you out this off season. Visit the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can click the submit a question button if you have a question you want to send our way, or you can dial our voicemail hotline. It's so easy. Mm. 302-464-TFFB. You know how to use a phone. You've used, you've seen a phone before. We only accept voicemail Oof. questions from touch tone. It's, if you're on a rotary, <laughs> that might actually be a little bit difficult. Did the rotary phones have the letters? I think they did. Oof. Brutal. Imagine having to live that life. Yeah, I've had a recurring nightmare where I <laughs> dial this number and mess up the last number each and every time on a rotary phone. I have to start over again. Nobody knows what a rotary phone is. <laughs> All right, let's start with the voicemail question. Hey, ballers. What rookie would you be most excited for to end up on the Cardinals? Maybe a C.D. Lamb reuniting with Kyla? Thanks. Yep, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> for me, it's... it's As still, a fan, for me, right. that's it. Yeah, I it, it would be... C.D. Lamb would be my second. I still prefer Jerry Judy. I think he's the most talented wide receiver in the draft. I've been a Jerry Judy believer for the last couple right. of years, and uh, that that's who I want. But I would love to see a great wide receiver come. Look, Larry Fitzgerald, he's not getting better with age, and he's also not going to play forever. Eventually, you've got to get a number one in there. I think Christian Kirk is a great number two. He's like a Sterling Shepard to me, a, just a really solid wide receiver, not a dominant one in the NFL. You need to get a guy like Jerry Judy, hopefully maybe – like C.D. Lamb. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd vote Lamb because of the history with Kyler. The, the history is makes it an interesting situation. Uh, currently, I would be on Team Jerry Judy because you, when you're watching the draft, when you're watching that Thursday night, day one, round one of the picks, you want a guy that you know who it is. It's just because it's far more exciting. Look, if they if the Cardinals went a route of taking like a a superstar linebacker or something. You're happy because the team got the player that they wanted, but it's just more fun because we're a fantasy show. So I want to talk about skill players. Yeah, they probably should have just it's addressed so addressed the defense. It's, <laughs> it's so offensive the skill player moniker. <laughs> you know, isn't it like, hey, look, skills pay the bills. Oh, yeah, I want a skill player, <laughs> not a linebacker. Yeah, that is that's really. <laughs> Wait, I'm skilled. <laughs> that is kind of offensive. Yeah. You're right. All right, YouTube question. This one from Alex. He says, what is Leonard Fournette's value in a dynasty league? Ooh. Would you trade him away to receive the 103 in the upcoming 2020 rookie draft? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think y you've got a handful of top flight running backs, and obviously we don't know where they are landing yet, but there should be I – th I think if you're in the top three, you're going to land a, a younger – good running back and that's kind of how you stay ahead of the curve in dynasty uh, Leonard Fournette's not too old I think he's 25 right now oh, right. um but very soon I mean he's you know they're not sure whether they're going to pick up the option you know running backs can go from being really really great and relevant to yeah, just turn 25 to done so um yeah I, I think I would make that move that's where where I want to be is I think that Leonard Fournette's going to be good for fantasy football next year. But in Dynasty, if I'm out a year early on a player, so be it. I would rather be out a year early for the 103 than a year too late on Leonard Fournette, and you're left holding the bag. You know what's funny, though? I, I want to bring this up because I, I was uh, offering a trade literally last night with Leonard Fournette in our Dynasty League, and I looked at 
at the the draft board thinking, oh, maybe I can trade Leonard like this exact question. Maybe right. I could trade Leonard Fournette for like a top three pick or something. And I was very hesitant. I've got Gurley, Fournette, and then nothing else. So I didn't have depth. And I was like, man, if I miss on that rookie, if I miss, my team is going to be hurt. Obviously, if I hit on the rookie, that's great. I'm just getting younger at the running back position. But I couldn't pull the trigger to offer that because I know Fournette's volume and, and quality is going to be good enough for my roster. So I don't know. Do you think I made a mistake there? I would probably accept the one on three for Fournette. I am curious what you would say about this follow up from Andy Holloway. Okay. Would you rather have Leonard Fournette or Le'Veon Bell in a dynasty league? Oh, Fournette. I, I mean, would... they just talked about Lev Bell's coming back next year for sure. He'll be the starting running back for the Jets. Obviously, getting paid. Fournette will be dealing with the contract situation. I Jason think, said Fournette. I think I would rather have Lev. That's where I lean. Like uh, his both Pain, of, painfully. Yeah, it, it is. You can hear the hesitancy in my voice. Of uh, I just I am very concerned. Come contract time for Leonard Fournette, that he's going to find anybody who really wants to pay up, including the Jaguars, without being more of a platoon situation Correct. or like the big back yes. on a team. I mean, look, Leonard Fournette. Really watching him play. Have you seen anything where you're like, man, that's a superstar running back that can change an offense. Like, if he went to the Texans right now, they're so much better. I think he's the closest thing to – I've always viewed him as his value is the way Derrick Henry's value is, whereas obviously Henry is a, a tier above in overall talent. But it's the ability to take the ball 20 to 25 times and be the identity of a team. I think he does have that in him. He doesn't have one or two plays where you go, okay, he's the most special skill player on the field, but I do think that there are only a select few backs that you can – build an identity of an offense around, and I think he currently is in that category. But And I agree. There are a few that you can build the identity, but can that identity with Leonard Fournette actually win? It did a couple years ago. Yeah. I, I think it can. I okay. think it can. I, I don't think he is uh, – I think he doesn't get enough credit for being a good back. Hmm. I think that's probably true. But he also needs to stay healthy for a full season, be able to carry that workload. It's crazy how much he caught the ball last year, too. Yes. So he showed that he could do that if needed. Hey, guys. After uh, listening to your trending episodes, um, I was uh, super interested on your guys' take of Mark Ingram next year. Obviously, placing in the RB1 situation last year, how are we treating him as uh, next year's redraft? Are you guys willing to put forward on him? Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one. It feels like a perfect follow-up to me when you talk about, like, Fournette having another good year in him, most likely. Lev Bell, maybe one year of consistent opportunity. And here's Mark Ingram, where these this is that category of, okay, he didn't have a million carries. He's getting older. You have Lamar Jackson concerns around the goal line. But I think Ingram is probably like great for another year. I, I, I'm much cooler on Ingram. Uh, he had 15 touchdowns. And yep. when you look at the top, 12 running backs, you know, your your RB1s, he was easily the the least uh, – he was the most touchdown-dependent guy. The the percentage of his fantasy points that came from touchdowns, I mean, he only had 202 carries. And he, he had five receiving touchdowns, which that is the number that seems not very sticky to me. So could he be a double-digit touchdown guy next year and get 10 rushing touchdowns? Sure, I mean, the, the, you know, certainly are, on the, that offense, That's yeah, well that, within the possibilities, I exactly. But I do think he's going to fall from where he was this year, um, and how they came. You know, he'd have a couple like three touchdown games where it wasn't always as consistent as you would have wanted it. So I'm not super high on Mark Ingram personally. I think that Mark Ingram will be a very good fantasy player next year. It's all about the draft price, which I'm not sure where the market will value like will mark ingram be a third round pick because people see him as a low-end running back one if that's the case then i'm i'm gonna be out but if you're talking a lower fourth into the fifth round pick then i'm very excited to get mark ingram usually running backs who aren't absolute superstars and even some that are when they hit 30 
they're a good value in the draft when they're good because people are afraid of the aging back. Mark Ingram's 30 years old. So you might be right, Mike, that his value in the draft dips to a place where, hey, okay, he doesn't get right. 15 touchdowns and he's still good for where you drafted him. Oh, yeah, I think you could enter that Frank Gore category. Exactly. But even when Frank Gore was ranking as a low, like the RB12, when he was the RB12 forever, you didn't treat him as your running back one. No, no. and so, you, did, I, you didn't pay that price, and you didn't treat him that way on your team. So Ingram is a two. Seems yeah, like a so nice value two. That's the, the summaries. I will not be drafting Ingram as a running back one. Yeah, no. If you can get a running back in the first round, wide receiver, wide receiver, and then in the fourth round or so have – Ingram as an RB2. That sounds sure. great right now. Yeah. All right, Instagram question. Be honest. This one comes in from J.D. Pugh. I don't know. That's, that no, is. that's correct. It's J.D. Pugh. Uh, J.D. Pugh <laughs> is, is That's French. the worst pronunciation <laughs> I yeah. could have picked. No, de, 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 de Pai? J.D. Pugh. J.D. Pugh, 24. J.D. Pugh, 24. Bonjour. Big summer blowout. <laughs> That's what it was. I knew there was some. There was <laughs> something. Yes. He says, be honest. Who's From the, the sauna. Who's the best foosball player? Who's the best foosball player? Who's the best? <laughs> Jay J J the Pew. Don't be <laughs> From the sauna says, who's the best foosball player in the office? Uh, who is the best foosball player? <clears throat> be <throat> honest. Hmm. Okay. I would ask Brooks, but he's not qualified to weigh in. Ooh, is that is Owl Borland mic'd up? I am. Oh, all right. I I think that Owl Borland is the only one who can. Man, I'm nervous honestly now. I can't wait to hear this, this question. Well, seeing how the current yeah. champs are, Mike and I, I'm gonna have to go with Mike. Heck yeah! Woo! I, I don't like that. I, I, I can classic Mike bias from Al Borland. Yeah. The, you, were, were you guys friends in high school? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. I can honestly say that there is an, a very real, genuine argument you could make for each of the three of us. Like, I could, I could make an argument that you are the best, Mike, that, Andy, you are the best, and I could make an argument that I'm the best. I don't think... And you have. Yeah, I, if that was it. Um, <laughs> we're real good. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, that's just the, that's, that's that's the, the, the overarching story here is you should be afraid to play all three of us in foosball. You should yeah, be terrified. You yeah. just don't do it. Just, I mean, you don't, you don't, there's certain things that you, you don't you play with a loaded gun. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't like bring a huge amount of money and say, we should play for. Don't pull this. on don't Superman's cape. Yeah, exactly. don't, don't spit in the wind. wind. Yeah. Love Michael uh, don't poke the bear. Okay. Yeah. Just stay, just stay clear. I'm the best defender. Yes, I will. I am. I will agree with that. If 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 it's one on one, I'm probably not the best because my offense is not as good as your two offense. We usually do team games. Yes. Anyways, the takeaway <laughs> the takeaway is we're it's great. foosball. It's foosball from Jay Depew. Thank, thank you, Jay Depew. Pew. <laughs> All right, Instagram question. Rather, uh, would you rather have AJ Brown or your choice of any rookie wide receiver in this draft class? Wow. That's an awesome question. So essentially you're saying, would you trade – would you rather have the 101 or would you rather have A.J. Brown? That's probably a fair question. And I think I would rather have A.J. Brown. It's, it's I, I cannot answer this yeah, without it, the destination of those sure. two big wide receivers. Yeah, like I mean, let, Let's say uh, C.D. Lamb to Arizona. Would you rather have C.D. Lamb landing with Kyler, beginning of their careers together, history in college – you know, six two, two hundred, C D Lamb running wild or A. J. Brown with what you've seen? If he has Tannehill, it would be A. J. Brown. Yeah, but but that's close. But I think your point here, Andy, is like if C D Lamb were to go to Arizona, I think that's phenomenal. He's gonna be great. But I don't think he would be the one on one. I don't think that would be the the, right, the best pick. Won't. You would be better than that at the one on one. So I would trade A. J. Brown for the one on one, but uh, that's based on history, not based on current knowledge, because we don't know the, where teams have been drafted. But historically, the, you go back and look at the one on one over the last several years, and more often than not, they're a player that is better than than AJ Brown. Uh, you know, would you outlook. trade Sutton for the one on one? Yeah, I'll yes. take the I'll take the one on one, and that's not an indictment of Cortland Sutton of where he could be. I mean, he was he was inconsistent, but he was pretty great last year his quarterback situation though is really bad of 
what what don't is, tell a Denver fan. Yeah, man. well, sorry, it, it's pretty bad. As in, you have no idea. It, like, is Joe Flacco coming back? Do they? Well, they're are they really they're committed to Locke? Are they really that committed to Drew yes. Locke? Is Drew Locke actually that good? He was a second round pick. Second round, the hit probability of a second round quarterback is much much he, lower. He was given a first round value by me. Drew Lock, Drew Lock yes. so, uh, that, so, that helps so, so that that's good. Um, no, it's not going to be Flacco. They've they weren't even talking about Flacco as a backup at the combine. They're okay. they're they're completely in on Drew Lock. But you're right. Is he good enough? Now the nice thing is Cortland Sutton, AJ Brown. We've seen them do it in the NFL. So you have yes. that known commodity. That's that, why Arlene, I'd rather have AJ Brown than the upside of the rookies because we believed in AJ Brown's upside as a rookie last year, and then you actually got to see it. Against NFL defenses, not was, just uh, college players. Fifty-first pick in the draft, AJ Brown, Brown last year. The likelihood that you'll have a chance to draft a, a first-round wide receiver is—I mean, that's what you're going to get with the one-on-one. Yeah. And then I don't know how confident I would be long-term with Tannehill. It would be very close with AJ Brown. Would you rather have Josh Jacobs or AJ Brown? Yeah, Obviously, I, team dependent running back for wide receiver. But if both were on the board and you were great everywhere, who would you draft? A.J. Brown. Yeah, I would probably take A.J. Brown. <laughs> I would take Josh Jacobs. Hmm. I was just bringing up because Jacobs was the one-on-one last year, right, on average? Uh, n- yes, him, he was, him and for Harry, sure. Him and Nikhil Harry were, yeah. who were kind of back and forth. Exa- that's a good that's, name that's to bring That's exactly up. the point. Well, we've, been da- we've been down that road with Corey Davis in yeah. Dynasty drafts before. It's not a good road if you're the Corey Davis owner. No. Yeah, it's not 100%. So... Because mm. yeah. no, no Corey Davis has Ryan Tannehill too, the same guy that we're talking <laughs> that is about, a fair right? Point. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's saying Corey Davis for sure, as long as he's got Tannehill. <laughs> but AJ Brown does seem elite. Yes. So he's so big. Yes, he's awesome. All right, let's and he's uh, a baby boy. Let's go ahead and hit another voicemail. Hey, ballers! This is Randy from Virginia calling. Uh, so my home league is switching over to a super flex, and I was just curious: do you guys still recommend waiting on quarterbacks? And a super flex, or do you go up and spend big on at least one quarterback and maybe wait for one to come back to you later? Thanks. Yeah, we get this question every year, and I think it's an area that we differ on a little bit more from one yes. another than the general late round quarterback strategy that we're all pretty aligned with. I I like to get one within that first three four rounds, my first one. Yeah, you, uh, Andy. You you often we we've seen your strategy where you'll take uh, a guy even in the first the second round, and then wait on that second one. Correct. Um, Mike is on the complete other side where he's still very much uh, adhering to the late round. Uh, and, and late round is – is that's just the name of the strategy. I'm, it's, it's, I'm looking at the supply and the demand of I'm cool with waiting on the quarterback, and maybe that means I'm waiting until the fourth round and not – I'm not waiting until the tenth round because the quarterbacks are going to start drying up. I just – there's value – I like the value of taking the veterans in the dynasty instead of having the hot, flashy Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, and I'd rather stockpile my my young wide receivers. Yeah, I, I, I am more on that side. I mean, here's the thing. You know, the, the ultimate draft kit, it's tier-based, and so it's not necessarily, right. you know, one QB or two QB leagues, but the reality is tier base is tier base. It doesn't really change whether you're in one quarterback or two quarterback leagues. Look at the players that you want and say, I want to be, I want to have a quarterback in this tier. And and it, to me, that's still not going to be the top tier. It's not going to be, I'm not going to pay up for the top tier, but I'm going to say, I want, you know, a guy in this tier, a guy in this tier and a guy in this tier. I want to leave with three quarterbacks in a two quarterback league and, you know, so I'm going to draft accordingly. Whatever round that is, depending on each different league, how people are drafted quarterbacks. All right, Twitter question. Adam wants to know, it's a, it's important. What is your favorite NFL helmet? Ooh. Do you have a interesting favorite NFL helmet? Do I have a favorite NFL helmet off the top of my head? When I was growing up, it was without question the Bengals. I don't, know, like if it's, I don't know if it still is, but like, it was unique. Looked like a tiger. I think that's my pick, Andy. Is it, oh. Brooks? Yeah. Growing up, the my, Ram, the Rams have a great helmet. The Rams, the is Eagles the first, have a great helmet. The Rams is the first one that came to mind because it's just like you know they they've got the Ram horns. I'll hit you with it. I personally like the Browns. 
I know it's oh, like no, no. I as love boring the as can be, but I love the Browns helmet. I actually I really, really like the Browns helmet. When I was growing up, the Pittsburgh Steeler helmet was actually my favorite. I'm looking at a picture of them all right now. Dude. Favorite versus iconic is a different thing. Too. Oh, yeah. Like yeah iconic yeah. is like the Cowboys should probably win that. Yeah, they probably would. I really, really love the Buffalo helmets, and I love the Minnesota helmets. Minnesota's yeah, but I was going to bring up the Vikings. I'm looking at these helmets, and I realize I like when the the logo is more of like the Eagles. They're the wings. The Rams are the horns. The Vikings are the horn. I, I, you know, it's like put putting the logo on the side. Unless it's iconic, like the Steelers. Right. Uh, I, Any praise that I give the Eagles helmet, I feel like could work against my goal of them going back to Kelly Green you know, oh, and everything. Yeah. So I don't want to go out there and speak if, well. If of, Tampa Bay will commit to going back to the old creamsicle. In the, uh, were you aware, Jay, that they're, they got new uniforms coming this year? Yes, I yeah, was. So I, and they've shown that orange is getting back in there somehow. If they bring back the old logo, then I'll go Tampa Bay. Because that swashbuckler guy, whatever his name is, I like him. He was, um, I think. Jack I Sparrow. Yeah, that was it. Yep, yep. It was Jack, no, it was, J, it was Jay DePew. <laughs> Jay DePew, 24. <laughs> Fearsome pirate. Jay DePew. Give Put me, me on the all helmet. your beauty. <laughs> and then your, where's your sunken treasure? <laughs> What's that sunken treasure? Sunken treasure. Sunken treasure. Your sunken treasure. <laughs> Jay DePew, 24. Best the room. We are so stupid. <laughs> oh, I love you, Footquin. Oh, oh, well. You thanks know. for sticking with uh. us. <laughs> this is this is special. All right. Do we have more more questions? Yeah, let's go. All right. Troy Lofton. Who comes back stronger from their hamstring injury? Chris Godwin or Jason? <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. Uh, once if you again, haven't seen video, this video, yeah. You're not on social media if you the, haven't seen at it. At the FF Ballers or on our Instagram. Because it's everywhere. Which I feel is like it should be on YouTube as well. Instagram.com slash fantasy football. It should be on YouTube. Yeah, we, we got we to gotta get it up there. But, uh, yeah, it's it's a good time. And here's the thing. <laughs> it's we, a terrible time. We had Pro Football Doc uh, yes. weigh in on this, um, and he believes – that the hamstring might have been caused by the seizure. Wait, um, he, he he weighed in on your injury? He did online. Someone needed a professional opinion on oh this. Oh my gosh, I missed that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he says that this is this is a one of a kind reaction. So <laughs> you don't want to miss that. I'm a, but to answer the question, Chris Godwin. Now it, it's true. Your wife says that you you tend to react very a little bit stronger than the average. My reactions to all things <laughs> physical like not not you know hearing news but uh, anything that happens i see you get scared someone comes around the corner and scares you scared or or i stub my toe or whatever it is they're at best very inappropriate <laughs> so the I, at I, worst they are, you saw it on Twitter. They are America's funniest home video. <laughs> yeah, so. I asked Pro Football Doc if he had ever seen anyone react to a cramp. Correct. Like the video he saw, and he's this is from a professional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He says, the total body convulsions seem unusual. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That was his. F former uh, team doctor <laughs> of the Chargers, uh, thank you for weighing uh, in. I could just see that on your NFL scattering <laughs> report. Previous injuries, total body convulsions, slightly unusual. Seem unusual. That's spectacular. <laughs> yeah. Mike, was that your idea to ask him? No, someone else oh, tagged him. Oh, that's so funny. That's so funny. Yeah, it, it's it's a good time. All right, last question. TJ Bell, waffle or sugar cone? Waffle. Are you kidding me? Waffle. waffle. Oh, my gosh. I thought you were saying, are you kidding me to Mike? Oh. No, waffle all day, every day. Do you want? Twice on Sunday. Do you want? And I'm the ice cream pro. Like, do you want? Paper? This is true. Your opinion on this is is stronger than mine. Do you want a flavorless paper uh, cup <laughs> that you can eat, or would you like a delicious baked treat that I can put your ice cream? I'm in? almost positive Jason is reversing waffle and sugar in his head right now. No, no way. Well, I know what a waffle cone is. Okay, what flat on the bottom is a sugar cone. Yeah. Point on the bottom is a waffle cone. Yeah. And, and you still are believing that that's better. 
that waffle cone waffle cones is are superior. Better. Yeah, yeah, waffles better. Yes, that's what Wait, he's that's been what, saying. That's what oh, I've been I'm, saying. You crazy man. Oh, so we all agree. Yes. yes. So what the heck am I talking about? I have no. No one knows. Why are we arguing? I thought you thought a sugar was better. No. All right, we're that all would be under- ridiculous. We all it's, under- so you thought I was reversing them? I did. It sounded like what I was describing was what I was describing. Correct. Okay. I thought you were reversing them. Okay. Yes. Mm, okay. We're on the same page. We're all together again. We're all together, Waffle Bros. <laughs> <laughs> Jay the Pew. Jay the Pew. Tweet all right, we want to thank Pristine Auction. Stefan Diggs signed logo football yesterday, $49 at pristineauction.com. We want to thank him for supporting the show. Pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. That is it for this episode of the Fantasy Footballers. We'll find out if we have a new CBA. We'll talk to you next week, and stay tuned. Maybe we should throw that up on YouTube. Enjoy the combine. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.